because I'm considered very fringe, you know, at some point, uh, of the research, some of the research I know will get traction, but it's, it's when, when things catch up to sort of where I'm at, because, you know, something has to be kind of the, the spear point. And a lot of time the people on the, on the tip doing the really fringe research, uh, it's to mainstream thought a little laughable and strange and the people kind of go, Oh, it's, that's quackery. You know, that's total BS. It's not accurate, but it's guys like Luke Montagnier, right? Luke was, he was the Nobel laureate who isolated the HIV virus. Right. And so he's a doctor, got a Nobel prize for isolating the HIV virus and then spent 15 years working on water memory. And everybody would say that he was just a stupid quack, save the fact that he was a Nobel laureate. And, you know, and kind of similarly to what he'd done with water research, with the HIV virus, he was like, hey, he found it, isolated it, and nobody paid attention to him for about three years before they were like, oh, ah, turns out he did. And so then, you know, he, he was given the Nobel Prize. Um, but with the water research, the stuff, the experiments that he has done are crazy, but brilliant. Like it, one of the ones that is, and this is, it's kind of a strange experiment, but he took someone's blood that had HIV and put a drop into water, did a like a tenfold dilution, um, and then took one drop out of that, put it in another tube, did a tenfold dilution, shook it, did, did another, and kept going until literally, if you ran a spectral analysis on it, it was just water, the equivalent of putting like a drop in the oceans of the world, right? So it's it's really after that many fold dilution, it just reads as water, no organic material whatsoever. And then he would use this recording array and record the frequencies coming off of that water. And then he would email the wave file with the frequencies to the Polytechnic Institute in Italy. They would play them back into a new vial of water, a thousand kilometers away, add a polymerase chain reactor to it, and then rebuild the DNA. And it was rebuilt with 98% fidelity for the DNA that they had used uh, in the research lab at, at no, his place. Why? Yeah, and I mean, so you can look it up. Mom. Homeopathy, the... the... Exactly. And that's why people are like, oh, that can't possibly work. Well, apparently, you know, shockingly water, if you stack it and, and water actually does, it stereoscopically stacks. It's not just random H2O floating around. It actually stacks as H3O2 in this kind of crystalline matrix. And, you know, and it, you can read Gerald Pollack's book. Uh, when I when I was teaching, I had two books that were required reading for my course. One was Gerald Pollack's book, The Fourth Phase of Water. And the other was a book, um, uh, about quantum biology. And, and those were two books that I thought were really, really important, uh, because they make people think the life at the edge was the quantum biology book. And it just makes people think about, well, maybe we understand it, but maybe we don't. And the, and the problem there is like, if you, if you went back 400 years and you told somebody, oh, the whole population is getting sick because they're being infected by these little things that you can't see that are moving through their body and it's spread in the air, people would have been like, ha, heretic, burn him. You yeah. know, they wouldn't believe it, right? But, you know, the technology advances were like, oh, look at that bacteria. Oh, we go even farther and go, oh, well, what's that? Viruses, you know, and now we're we're doing stuff and kind of on the front lines where like Montagnier's work where it's it sounds like quackery right like homeopathy oh can't possibly be right maybe maybe that's the case but maybe you know if you stereoscopically stack something and it forms a crystalline matrix I can see a lot of cases where crystals do store things right we use we use matrices as a storage media all the time right in fact we can use electron spin as a storage media you know it's uh you can you can store a lot more data if you stop recording it the way we typically do it and use electron spin right and actually just the way something is rotating is the zero or the one in lieu of you know actually burning something in to be a zero or one or waiting for an electron to move through a transistor if you just look at the spin right you can do the same thing and and spintronics is i mean that's it's very cutting edge but it's a thing, right? Yeah. And so we as people, I think, have so much hubris about like, you know, the give a monkey a brain, he'll think he's the center of the universe kind of thing. We are just scratching the damn surface, right? Like literally with our senses, we pick up 0.0001% of the total electromagnetic spectra. So to say that a lot of stuff is probably missing us is like the most gross understatement. It's like literally if you walked up to, you know, in, in the States, like 
the Empire State Building and you put your face against it and then opened your eyes and said, tell me everything about this entire building, right? That's kind of, that's the equivalent in scale of what we do with pretty much everything. So there's so much more that we can learn and, you know, learn and expand on. But, but again, guys like Montagnier, he's kind of fringe, right? The stuff I'm doing with, you know, quantum technology and things like that, it's considered very fringe. A lot of people just go, they're very dismissive offhandedly and go, well, that can't be. Why? Can't be because we're so amazing as humans that we figured everything out. Like Lord Kelvin said at the turn of the last century, like everything that can be discovered has, you know, like, right. Yeah. And, you know, his postulate was that Everything that could be discovered already was discovered. And the only thing from here on out was gradients and degrees of precision with it. Yeah, because nothing's changed in the past hundred years. You know, it's it's laughable. And uh, it's, I mean, you know, that's what gets me going though. It's like, I get to, I'm, you know, that's my sandbox. I get to play yeah. with all the weird stuff. 